Welcome back to Virtual Reality. My name is Thomas and you're watching Voodoo the EVR. Finally, I can show you a review of the new Meta Quest Pro. This is a standalone headset that you can use without PC, but you can also connect it to PC. So I will go to all the categories like you are used uh, at yeah, that uh, for, for me. Um, for example, the, the display, comfort, battery, life, mixed reality, tracking and all the stuff I will show you in this video. As always, thank you to my sponsors, Woodcast VR, Oppermann Events, Virtual Escape, Slim Beats and Endline Audio with their VR headset microphones. All links and coupon codes in the description. Let's have some fun with the review and let's go. Okay guys, here we are in a short unboxing. If you don't like unboxings, check out the link in the description below. I have the timestamps to all the categories of my review. So this is the package. It's the 265 gigabyte version. In Germany it's not available, so I uh, ordered that from Amazon France. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we have the pictures here of the docking station controllers and the headset. And yeah, let's just open that, I would say. I already opened that for my German unboxing as always, so I know what's inside, haha. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a little bit ugly here, <laughs> because it's just a uh, normal package here. Okay, here, there's, I'm not sure. Oh, there's, there is, I, I just forgot that. There is something here. Protective cover. Oh, it's it's a protective cover. Okay. Then here we go. Let's first check out what's inside this small package here. So here we have the power plug. See that? And then we have uh, two small guides. Uh, this is a cleaning cloth, and this is a welcome card with a small introduction and the safety and warranty guide. I, I'm sure that I will not read that. <laughs> now let's put that on side. Then we have the cables here. This is uh, the dock for the controllers, I think. And here is a USB-C cable for the headset. Nice. That's this one. And then let's check out the controllers here. Look at this. So this is very unusual because normally we have this um, tracking ring from the touch controllers above these controllers, but they don't have that and that's crazy. I'm really looking forward to, to see uh, the, the tracking because look at this, uh, we have uh, put that away. Um, here's a camera and here are two cameras for tracking only of the controller. Here's the docking for a charging, grip button, trigger button, A, B, thumbstick, and the, still the Oculus logo, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. And now we have no battery here because it's included. We cannot open that and the other controller as well. Y and X and menu button, really good. And the straps, of course, we can, I think we can disassemble them and put something like a a pen here, I don't know. However, let's check out the headset. Look at this. Look at this. Wow, that looks cool. Looks nice. But uh, to be honest, um, when you see this surface here, when you, when you touch that, you will see the fingerprints and that's getting dirty very fast. And I don't like this kind of surface here, but yeah, I, it's, it's okay. Then here we have the wheel for the head strap. Here's another wheel, but I'm not sure. Oh, I, I see it's moving the, the front of the plate here. So then we have the sound slots here. On, uh, you see that here, there and there. I think this is a switch on button. Then we have audio jacks on both sides and um, volume up and down. Very nice. And look at the at the lenses, they are so clear. I'm really looking forward to watch through these lenses. <laughs> nice. And the cameras, one, two, 
three, four, five cameras as it seems. And that looks also pretty comfortable here. Nice. Let's put that on the head. This is without the um, VR parts. I, I will show you. So this this um, is nice. It's uh, really comfortable for the first try. I, I will try it um, more, of course. Uh, but you can see the light leakage here because this is the mixed reality mode, I would say. Uh, we have some um, small parts that we can attach here so that there is no light leakage. That's nice. So this is the headset. And we still have some more stuff here. So this is the docking station. We can put the headset here and the controllers here. And there is the, wait, here, USB-C port to charge. And here, that's what I talked about. This is the, what do they call that, light blocker, okay. And then, you, this is so easy, you can just put that here. Look at this. That's it, it's just magnetic. And then, when you put it on, then, then, then there is no light leakage. Uh, I, I will show it later. Yeah, so this is very nice. And now I will go through the single categories in my review. Okay, let's talk about the design. I already mentioned that a little bit in my unboxing. So what I don't like is this uh, reflecting surface here and on the front. So you see the fingerprints, you, see, you can see that already here. Yeah, the fingerprints and that's bad. Why should they do that? Yeah. Also, the design is strange. Look, look at these two cameras here. See that? It looks like, like uh, crying eyes, that, like a, a sad face. <laughs> like, why, why should they do that? I mean, it's not important, but uh, it's what I uh, noticed. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the rest is pretty nice, so uh, everything feels uh, comfortable and uh, quality seems to be good. Here's the Meta logo at the back. Also, the, I love the design of the lenses, L looks nice. Also here at uh, the uh, forehead and uh, the back head here is, is also nice. So yeah, all in all, it's, it's okay from a design, but I don't like the surface. Let's talk about comfort and weight. So the MetaQuest Pro is 742 grams and this is not uh, very light to be honest. When we see the Pico 4, I think it has around 580 or something like that. And that is much lighter of course. And when I put this headset on my head, the MetaQuest Pro, um, like this, the first thing that I notice is that here is no strap. There's no strap that you can, where you can fix that a little bit or spread the weight or something. There is no strap, so I have to pull that one here. And here is another wheel um, for the distance between the lenses and, and my eyes, like this here, yeah. And uh, I mean, that works. It sits on my head, but when I play like half an hour, I... I don't feel comfortable anymore. It pushes on my head and um, that's not so cool. Yeah? I, I mean, when I, when I use the Pico 4 or the, or the Quest 3, look at, you see that here? See that? Yeah, it's, it's just a red, uh, a really red uh, area here on my head and that's bad. It, it's just, for me, it's not comfortable. The Pico 4 and the Quest 2, in my opinion, are more comfortable than this one. It's very individual, of course. There will be people that say, of course, this is very comfortable, but, but just for me, it's not comfortable. And that's what I can tell you. Let's talk about the display. So, um, when I put that on my head and switched that on for the first time, I thought, hmm, this is not really impressive. <laughs> that that um, the resolution of this headset is um, it's an LC display with 1800 by 1920 at 90 hertz. This is nothing special. There are many headsets with better resolution. And uh, I mean, it's not disturbing, but you will notice the pixels. You will notice them, um, uh, in, in, uh, for example, when you have a white 
text on black background or so, you will see that and it's not so bad, but you will just notice that, yeah? That's what I want to tell you. Uh, the colors are really good. They have uh, really powerful colors. Uh, the black levels are not so good because it's an LC display. It's a disadvantage of an LC display. Um, but all in all, it's okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay, the, the display. Um, all in all, we have the pancake optics. That, that means the, the unit here is very small um, uh, and uh, that results in a smaller headset, of course, and lighter headset, although it isn't so light. <laughs> Um, that's uh, so far. So the display, I'm not so impressed to be honest. Let's talk about the lenses. So we have these lenses here, they are clear, these are clear lenses, no Fresnel lenses and that results in no God ray effects and that's really good. Uh, there was no problem. Also with sweet spot and edge to edge clarity, I didn't have any problems. Uh, all in, in, in the whole area I could see everything clear, also text and all the stuff. Um, light leakage. So we have this um, magnets here for the side. So on the side there is no problem with light leakage. But when I put that on my head you can see here is nothing that covers the light. And uh, this, this could be disturbing for uh, some people. Um, so um, this is a problem. You see everything around here. Um, there is something that you can buy, um, like a cover for 50 bucks, and then you really have uh, everything covered, but then the uh, docking ports do not work anymore. So this is crazy. It's, I think it's 50 bucks, but all in all, I want to tell you there is light leakage from the bottom. So, and then let's talk about field of view. How much do you see from the virtual reality? So I, the values that I will show you now are my personal values. You will have different values because your head shape, uh, your eye shape and everything is very individual. So my personal values about the field of view of the MetaQuest 3. I had a vertical field of view of 98 degrees. Uh, that's a little bit less than with the Quest 2 or the Valve Index, but the horizontal field of view was 108 degrees for me. And that's even more than the Valve Index with 104. That's crazy. I'm really impressed. So the field of view is really huge and uh, I had no problems with that. Let's talk about the setup. So if you already know the Quest 2, then this is the same with the Meta, Meta, Quest, Pro, uh, two, Meta Quest Pro. So you will just switch that headset on and then it says uh, you need an update. You will put that on the docking station and then it uh, is doing an update. And after that, you have to connect it to the smartphone app. Yeah, You have to connect it to your Meta account and after that, uh, you are good to go. You can uh, use all your um, um, library stuff with the with the MetaQuest uh, 3, uh, MetaQuest Pro that you already use with the MetaQuest 2. Yeah, that's you can use all the games. And after that, you can switch on all the functions of the MetaQuest Pro. For example, the eye tracking. There is integrated eye tracking. You have to calibrate that. You have to look uh, a dot. Uh, that's uh, going through the whole picture and you have to follow that with your eyes. Also the face tracking can be activated and the hand tracking. Yeah, that's uh, everything has to be activated inside the menu and after that you can use that inside the games. And you can, uh, uh, the, the rest is, the menu is like the same with the Quest 2. You can use all the, all the stuff. You can individualize your home environment. For example, you can switch that to a, a Lord of the Rings environment or something. You can even switch it to your pass-through mode via the camera. So you see a real environment and the menu is fl uh, flying around there. So that uh, everything works and the setup is uh, really easy. And, and you can also use the uh, pointer to uh, mark your play area. That's also nice. You can even set up your, your whole room with walls and all that stuff and your, and your couch and everything, even the door for some games. This is important. And yeah, the setup is really nice with the MetaQuest Pro.
let's talk about game compatibility. So there is the meta store, of course, that uh, um, you can buy uh, stuff uh, for the Meta Quest Pro. And this is the same store than the Quest 2. So if you already have some games for the Quest 2, like Beat Saber, you will be able to play it on the Meta Quest Pro. And that's cool. So they share the same app store. You have a lot of games for the Meta Quest 3 and a lot of apps, of course. And you can also connect the Meta Quest Pro via cable, here USB-C cable, or wireless to your PC. And then you can install the Meta software for the PC and play games in their store. For example, Asgard's Wrath, this is only available for PC. Or you can play all the Steam VR games as well with the MetaQuest Pro. So that means you will be able to play Half-Life Elix with the MetaQuest Pro and all the PC VR games. So there's a lot of stuff that you can play and where you can use the MetaQuest Pro. That's really nice. Only thing that doesn't work are PlayStation VR games. The rest you can play with this headset and that's really nice. Let's talk about IPD settings. So this is really strange because this headset has eye tracking and I expect that this is going automatically like uh, the, the Pico 4 for example has uh, motors that uh, can uh, switch to the right uh, position but here um, the, the headset recognizes your IPD, it says okay you have 62 and then you have to do it manually by sliding uh, the lenses here and that's strange. I expected for such an expensive headset that it's doing that automatically but obviously it doesn't do that. So um, the range is from 59 millimeter to 70 millimeter, which is also not so cool because I, I know many people that have like 58 or 74 and this is gonna be a problem perhaps with this headset. So for me it's not a problem because I have 60, that's fine, but I'm not so impressed by the IPD settings of the MetaQuest Pro. Let's talk about mixed reality. So they are talking a lot uh, about the MetaQuest Pro and mixed reality. This is really crazy. So um, I tried some apps. They have a dedicated section in the Meta uh, Store only for mixed reality apps for the MetaQuest Pro. And I tried, for example, I expect you to die home sweet home. And that's so nice. You are inside a huge virtual box and then you have some small doors that you can slide uh, um, to the side and through these slots you see a real environment and that's so cool that's really cool in the video unfortunately due to privacy reasons they don't record um, the real environment so you only see black but uh, in the inside the headset you see a real world and that's so cool or you have some puzzling games where you uh, have a uh, uh, a, a virtual desk and you can puzzle and around that you see a real environment uh, and the pass through is really nice it's full color it's much better than with the quest 2 but it's still not perfect you see some pixels and it sometimes it's too bright when your uh, lights inside your room are too bright or something it's still not perfect and i would say if you only want to buy that for trying some uh, mixed reality apps it's much too expensive yeah it's too expensive. Um, there are just a handful of stuff you can try. So it's nice to have, but I don't, I wouldn't buy it just only for that. Let's talk about tracking. Face tracking, eye tracking, hand tracking, headset tracking, controller tracking, hand tracking, all the stuff. So uh, what I tried is uh, when you, when you want to use that, you have to activate that in the menu, hand tracking, eye tracking, face tracking and all the stuff. And when you enter a game that supports it, it asks for the permission. For example, Horizon Workrooms, I tried that, I created an avatar and, that's, uh, and, it, and it said, uh, do you want uh, uh, to, to allow the game to, to use your uh, eye tracking and face tracking? And you have to say yes. And after that you can use that. And I made an avatar and I made some strange movements with my face like like this or something. <laughs> and that works. It's really good. Uh, the, the face tracking really works very good. It just doesn't recognize your tongue. Uh, that doesn't work. But the rest is really fine. You can uh, 
pinch one eye or you can uh, do it with your nose or something. <laughs> everything works and that's really nice. Also the eye tracking, uh, everything works. Uh, also the hand tracking, you know that from the Quest 2. You can uh, use the uh, um, fingers to, to uh, activate something in your menu or in the, in the Quest menu or so. And that's uh, really a, a good thing. Also the tracking of the headset is really good, uh, th that's no problem. And the controllers, are they have the cameras and a chip inside, they track themselves. That means it uh, works behind your back. You, you will be able to uh, track the stuff behind your back, yeah? everywhere, even inside your ass. <laughs> it can be tracked everywhere, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, and that means this is a really a good thing. Also, they are really small and then you can use a small pistol and, and aim uh, directly in front of each other. That works also very good. So all the tracking, the headset tracking, the controller tracking, face tracking, eye tracking and hand tracking works really, really good. It's the best what you can have in virtual reality. Nice thing. Let's talk about sound and microphone. So the sound, I was really impressed by the sound. So we only have the slots here and the speakers here, yeah, integrated. Um, normally that means that the sound is pretty bad, but for the MetaQuest Pro, I was impressed. I had some nice bass and um, nice sounds, clear sounds. And uh, I didn't expect that, so I'm really impressed by, this, uh, by the integrated sound of the MetaQuest Pro. The microphone is also nice, we have them here. Um, and I made a test, let's uh, check it out. Okay, welcome back to Virtual Reality. This is a microphone test of the MetaQuest Pro. Let's do some popping sounds, pop, 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 and let's scream a little bit. I'm looking forward to hear the results. Yeah, so as you can hear, this is uh, pretty nice. It's uh, not, uh, not uh, the, the HTC is the, the worst uh, microphone, as you know. And uh, I think this one is uh, much better. Uh, you can use that without problems uh, to uh, work together or to play together, hang out with your friends. They can understand you very clear. So uh, sound and microphone is really good with the MetaQuest Pro. Let's talk about battery life. So the battery life of the controllers are uh, is eight hours. Yeah, eight hours for the controllers and for the headset. It's it. Of course, it depends what you do, but um, it could run out of power in only one hour. Yeah, when you do uh, stressful stuff for the headset. Um, I would say the battery life is between one and two hours for the MetaQuest Pro and that's not much. Yeah, that's not much. I expect more for such an expensive headset. Of course you can use a, a, a power supply here and then you can uh, play longer or, or so uh, or external battery or something. Uh, but after that now you, you have to recharge that and then you will put that in the including docking station. You will put it on the docking station and the controllers as well. But I don't like that. The headset is fine to put that on the docking station, but the controllers are really tricky. You have to put them in the right angle like, like this. And um, that's strange. I don't, I don't really like that. I don't like the docking station. So that's it. Let's talk about the connectors. So I, I already showed that in the unboxing. Here are two audio jack here and there. So you can use your own headphones. You can also use them via Bluetooth because it has integrated Bluetooth yeah, for your Bluetooth headset. And then we have the USB-C port here. Yeah, you can charge that or connect something, um, but you can also charge it with the docking ports here for the integrated docking station. That's uh, really nice. And it also has Wi-Fi, of course. So this is fine. I don't think uh, we can complain here. This is very nice. Let's do a glasses test. Look at this big glasses, we will see. So the first problem is we cannot uh, put that stuff up like with other headsets. So it's a little bit tricky to get under the headset with the glasses. So let's do it like this. And then you can do it here. Okay, so then after you, you, you have it in position, there is no problem, yeah? 
So uh, it doesn't touch the, the lenses, it, it doesn't touch your, uh, it doesn't hurt or something. That's uh, absolutely no problem, even with these big glasses. But when you want to get it off, then you have to be a little bit careful because, uh, yeah, you cannot put that up, that, that uh, uh, head strap. But all in all, you can wear these glasses under the headset without problems. Let's talk about the controllers. So, these are the controllers. Uh, you have to get used to that when you, uh, um, before that you played with a, a touch controller and then you have this uh, tracking ring here and this is gone. So this is really strange, but it's really good. They, they feel really good. They feel uh, like uh, quality controllers. They even have this uh, little side here um, that goes a little bit down so you can place your thumbs here. That's nice. Also the pressure point of these controllers feels really good even with the trigger or the grip button. Everything feels really good and uh, they, they really lie good in your hands. You can use the straps of course if you like. That feels good. Let's talk about the removable, removable parts. <laughs> so um, there's not much that you can remove, unfortunately. So this back plate, I, I don't want to destroy it, yeah, uh, but it doesn't seem that you can remove it. Even the, the, uh, the part that you put on your back head here, it doesn't, it, it's not removable. Also, uh, this part here for, for my forehead, uh, it doesn't, Remove it, it's not possible to remove that. Only parts that you can remove are the light blockers here. You can that's easy because it's just uh, magnetic, yeah. But everything else you cannot remove, and that's bad because there are some third party accessories, for example, for VR cover or so, and then it's not possible. You have to, I don't know, put it over the existing one or so. I don't know, but that's uh, not a good thing. Let's talk about heat development. So some VR headsets have problems with heat development. For example, the Valve Index gets pretty hot, but uh, the MetaQuest Pro doesn't have this problem, at least for me, uh, when I played all the games and all the stuff. Um, I didn't really notice that it's getting hot or even warm. That's no problem. Also the controllers. So uh, heat development is not a problem with the MetaQuest Pro. Let's talk about cleaning. Yeah. So this is a really good thing because uh, at the back here, when the dead gets uh, dirty, you can just use a, a, a wet towel uh, to clean that. Also at the uh, forehead part here, uh, that's also easy. And then you can remove the light blocker, then you cl can clean it here. Also the lenses can be cleaned very good. Uh, so that's uh, not a problem here with this headset. Let's talk about a very important thing, the price. So this headset is 1,500 bucks, plus tax, of course. And this is a lot for a head, for a VR headset. So, I mean, it feels really good, but it's very expensive. So it's not meant for gamers, it's for uh, enthusiasts or for um, workers or uh, for business. Yeah? And that's uh, what, they, what they want to sell it for. So uh, you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it on the Meta page, whatever. I will put all the links in the description below. And there are also some bonus uh, accessories that you can uh, uh, buy, like an, another docking station or a, a bag or something that's even more expensive <laughs> uh, after that. So I, I don't like it that uh, there is no bag included with the price of 1,500 bucks. Why? Why is that? That's crazy. So yeah, all in all, um, we will talk about this in the conclusion as well, what I think about the price. Okay, and let's come to a conclusion. I will list all the pro and contra arguments again. So on the pro side, I will definitely put mixed reality. Um, that's really nice to, to play around with this uh, color pass through some apps, uh, especially this, this uh, um, I expect you to die was really nice. Uh, so uh, the mixed reality apps are really nice. The tracking of the headset is really good. Everything about the tracking, the headset tracking, the controller tracking, eye tracking, face tracking, hand tracking is really pro. It's really good. So if you like that, then this is uh, the way to go with this headset. Then, of course, the compatibility. You will be able to play all the games like uh, 
the Meta Quest Store, the Meta PC Store and Steam VR. You can play all the games with this headset. What I also like uh, is the lenses. They are really clear. Yeah, there is no problems with the lenses and the big field of view. It's not as big as Pimax, of course, uh, but it's big enough. It's no problem and I love the lenses. On the contra side, I would definitely say the price. I mean, 1,500 bucks plus tax. This, I, I have no idea why this is so expensive. I mean, uh, on the, uh, in the Pico 4, we also have eye tracking and all that stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, it's better, of course. There are some things that are better with this headset. But the huge price difference... I mean, this is uh, 450 and this is 1,500. This is crazy. I'm not sure if, if this is worth it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is, this is crazy. Especially when you see the comfort of this headset is really not good. I missed the head strap here on the upper side for spreading the weight on my head. Uh, so I, my, my forehead... Uh, um, it really hurts after several minutes. I don't like the comfort of this headset. Also, the battery life of only one or two hours of the headset is not enough for me for this price. Uh, so that's what I can tell you. So who should buy this headset? I think only people that are really enthusiasts about this metaverse stuff, this mixed reality stuff, work together with others, play together with others in mixed reality, paint something together or, or if you love this avatar stuff uh, with the uh, moving uh, um, uh, face and all that stuff. If you like that, then you should give that a go. But for all other people, the Quest 2 or the Pico 4 is really enough. Uh, it's, n this it's not much better than the Quest 2, I would say, in many belongings, especially the display. So if you want to buy it, check out the link in the description below there. You can buy it. Would be nice if you tell me if uh, you want to buy it or not. Also, if you have many more questions, put them in the description below. And if you want to support me, only one buck per month, you get behind the scenes videos and early access to my videos. Check out the first pinned comment. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell and see you next time in virtual reality. See ya! Voodoo D.E.